today's hall meeting is number 618. <laughs> our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us, strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
works, begun, continued, and ended in you. We may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, obtain, obtain everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Today's first lesson is taken from Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 7 to 11. So you mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalms is taken from Psalms 119, starting from verse 33, finishing at verse 40. And our response is, Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Teach me, O Lord, the ways of your statutes, and I will observe it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with all my heart. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Turn my heart to your decrees and not to selfish gains. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities, give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servants your promise, which is for with, for those who fear you. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Turn away the disgrace that I dread, for your ordinance is good. See that I have longed for your precepts. In your righteous gives me life. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Our second reading is taken from Romans chapter 13, starting from verse 1 to 10. And it reads Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God. Those authorities that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists authority resists God, what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct but to bad. Do you wish to have your uh, to have fear of authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive its approval. For it is God's servants for your good. But if you do what is wrong, you should should be afraid, for the authority does not bear the sword in vain. It is a servant of God to execute wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be subject, not only because of the wrath, but also because of the conscience. For the same reason, you also pay taxes for the authorities of God's servant, busy with these very things. 
pay all what is due to them. Taxes to whom taxes are due, revenue to whom revenue is due. Respect to whom respect is due, honor to whom honor is due. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Ladies and gentlemen, give me a skip number 538. Jesus Christ, as it is recorded in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, beginning to read at verse 10. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you, in heaven their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep, and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault where the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed 
by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It is always soothing to listen to Matthew's Gospel 18, 12 onwards. If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, Truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. The Lord is our true shepherd, the one who rejoices in reclaiming the lost and does not abandon because he has plenty. Let me deviate and dive in to reflect on our Father in Heaven this Father's Day. It is often mothers who are celebrated and it is quite okay to do so. However, Marian Bakerman's Cranenberg and Amsterdam Uni researcher who is doing a series of studies on family relations stated, and I quote her, half of parents are fathers, yet 99% of the research on parenting focuses on mothers. Mothers perhaps do play the prominent role in a family. Nevertheless, fathers do their significant part in a subtle yet profound way. I recollect my father's substantial role as the major financial provider who treated my mother with utmost respect and care. There were no stereotypical gender roles in my family except that my father did not enjoy cooking while my mother loved cooking and serving. While mothers are quick to express their feelings, both anger and affection, fathers tend to remain on the calmer side and it can be misunderstood as men not being affectionate enough. There is no prejudice or generalization when I say the daily dose of inspiration and affection comes from our mothers, while the long-term planning and support we receive are from our fathers. It is worth investigating the scriptural insights of fatherhood on Father's Day. Every Christian father should aspire to become a father like God the Father as we come across in the scriptures, compassionate, loving and forgiving and the one who rejoices in saving the lost. Let me gently remind you of the father whom we come across in the story of the prodigal son in Luke's Gospel chapter 15 to verses 20 to 24. So he, the prodigal son, got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, 
threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. There is immense joy and celebration in the homecoming. So does the Father in heaven who rejoices when we follow our way back home to be embraced and loved forever. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 we read, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. It is imperative that every father realize the fact that apart from scriptures, several studies have shown that fathers do play a major role in the positive upbringing of children and their future course of life. A study shows that babies with emotionally engaged dads show better mental development as toddlers and are less likely to have behavioral problems later on compared to babies whose dads behave in a more detached way. All the children benefit too. Those whose fathers are more emotionally supportive tend to be more satisfied with life and have better relationships with teachers and other children. In Scotland, a study of more than 2,500 families showed that supportive father-child relationships matter as much as mother-child relationships for children's well-being. All these are pointers to the fact that fatherhood and parenting is a significant role. One can either neglect it for one's own personal pleasure and freedom or give it a thoughtful consideration. A Christian father is called to do a responsible job as we expect our Father in heaven to do to us. To the children listening to this sermon, I have only one advice. And I may sound a little old school, but this is what my 20 years of engaging with families has taught me. Do what you can to honor your fathers and mothers when they are alive. Don't regret about doing nothing later in life. There is a lot of sacrifice in being a parent, and I am certain that parents do rejoice in those sacrifices most of the time with zero expectations. However, the very fact that their children realize those sacrifices itself will be the best recognition that you can give back to your fathers and mothers. You don't have to be considerate every day and every moment, but acknowledge their worth and value when they deserve it. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 to 3 we read, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land. And let me conclude with one of the uh, best verses in the Bible written by one of the wisest men that we have ever known, Solomon. In Proverbs chapter 6 verses 20 to 22. My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them to your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. 
Now may all glory, honor, and power be unto God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, Begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Let us pray that all fathers and father figures receive blessings from God this day, be confident in their role, receive respect from their children and be supported in their needs. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray that this new month inspire people, leaders, communities and nations to discern how best to care for each other and our common home. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. Let us remember those whose mental health has become more fragile during this COVID-19. They not be forgotten but receive the help they need to overcome heightening anxieties. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray that violence in different parts of the world come to an end. The political crisis in countries be overcome. The violence against Christians cease in Nigeria and communities affected by bushfires, cyclones and storms in countries like the United States be held. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Let us for a moment remember our departed fathers who led a silent yet significant role and have endured the Heavenly Father's eternal home. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Let us pray. We, we do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Shall we share the peace of God? The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God, Father God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honor be yours, always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Savior, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of many and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying,
We pray that by your blood and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink the meal be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you, and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with his bread and his cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never ending praise.
Gracious God, we thank you that in this sacrament you are sure of your goodness and love. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and help us to grow in love and obedience that we may serve you in the world and finally be brought to that table where all your saints feast with you forever. Father, we, we offer ourselves to you, to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send, Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The peace of God which pass all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of your Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you. Amen. Glory and peace to love and serve. In, In the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. This message is for those who did not receive the company or support of their fathers for various reasons. Today, thank your mother for taking up those additional responsibilities that made you safe and happy. Don't deprive them of their happiness they deserve. Your father in heaven is your perfect companion and source of strength. Take refuge in him for he is compassionate loving and forgiving and to all the non-parents you have an open and free world the world is yours and bless every child that you come across apart from father's day message i have a couple of things to remind you we are hoping to start a wednesday morning service at 10 a.m on zoom if you would like to join and don't know how i'm happy to help you please don't hesitate to call me. And finally, on our parish's website, there are resources that may help you during the lockdown. Please search on Google or type in St. Peter's Bandura and you will see a special heading dedicated to COVID-19 resources. It is absolutely free and easy to use. Please make use of those resources. God bless you all. Have a blessed day. A blessed Father's Day, a blessed week, and a blessed